Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How is everyone doing on this beautiful Thursday night? I hope everybody's week is going great. I know mine is. I can't complain about anything. I got my beautiful sisters with me tonight. These amazing women of God, I have the distinct honor of showcasing on tonight. So welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the second night of the Elect Leader Mentorship Programs Virtual Celebration and Leadership Showcase. Do me a favor, take a moment like I am right now and share this out to some of the groups, some of the pages that you know that there are um, amazing men and women of God that love to celebrate what God is doing in the kingdom and the lives of his precious ones. I will finish sharing to some more pages later. But I hit a couple of pages out the gate. I wanted to make sure I did this early. So listen, for any of you who don't know me, because I do hope that there are a few watchers tonight that are friends with Elder Joanne and Prophet Kivia that may not know me personally. Let me introduce myself. I am Marguerite. I am Apostle Marguerite Isaac, and I lead here at Crossover Empowerment Kingdom Ministries alongside with my husband, Prophet Jerry Isaac. And I am just excited to also have Elect Woman Enterprises, who in partnership with our ministry has um, established an amazing leadership mentorship program. And these ladies are part of that program. And that's what we are doing tonight. We are celebrating their achievements in this program. So tonight I have with me Two of the ladies that have graduated, I have with me Elder Joanne Smith. Wave to the people, Elder Joanne, yes. And I have Prophet Kevia Woods with me. Wave, beautiful woman of God. Yes, yes, yes. So just for any of you who um, are just maybe here supporting or just scrolling through and you're not quite sure what this is about, you may be asking, what is this ELM program? E-L-M stands for Elect Leader Mentorship. What is this about? When and where, you know, did it play, take place? Well, um, I went through these things last night, but I want to go through them tonight and tomorrow night because each night I anticipate we may have a few different people viewing in support of these ladies. And I want you to really appreciate everything that God has done in them and everything that they have accomplished through this program. So Elm, is a virtual kingdom leadership mentoring program where we are charged with reproducing a different breed of leaders. Kingdom leaders whose inner attitudes and motivations and thoughts have been dealt with, prepared, and developed by the dealings of the Holy Spirit for the full release of their gifts and ministries. Hallelujah. So you know what? This has been quite the journey. We began this journey with orientation on uh, January 16th, 2023. And when we started, we had a full room, ladies, right? We had like 14 um, people with us, 14 registered candidates. We call them candidates. I like to call them candidates because everybody isn't going to be elected. You know, they're not going to become the, the elect, uh, but we have 14 registered candidates in attendance. Uh, and then the last session was held November 22nd of this year with six elect leaders. We had six elect leaders who endured the Holy Spirit's dealing process. It wasn't, I believe, you know, nothing against those who didn't make it to the end, but I really believe that it wasn't the season for everyone to endure this level of intense mentorship. Why is that? Well, as I mentioned last night, along with the book, okay, the book reading, this is a very big, this isn't no small book, this is a big full sheet size paper book, okay? And it's heavy duty and and it's, it's chock full, it's chock full. So <clears throat> along with, the book reading, 
which consists of 22 chapters. And then the SWOT analysis and assessments that each person had to do. Plus, we had 34 in-class virtual sessions, which lasted for a minimum of two hours, some almost close to three hours, okay? So we had 24 sessions, study and discussion sessions, and special presentations by guest instructors. These leaders clocked well over 75, 80 hours of just in-class time, not including their personal reading, study, and assignment prep time. So not everyone is in a season where they can commit to this level of preparation and mentorship in kingdom leadership. And I understand that. We understand that. So uh, why was Elm created? Why was the Elect Leader Mentorship Program created? Well, bottom line, we can look all around us in this world and we see that there is a need for leadership, right? But especially in the kingdom of God, God needs his believers to rise up and to be the leaders that they're called to be, not just in ministry, in church, but in their communities, on the job. We just need his kind of leadership, right? So there's a need for leadership and believers, followers of Christ are needed and intrinsically qualified to be called and commissioned just because Holy Spirit is in them and with them. But just because we're called and qualified by nature doesn't mean that we are by practice, by attitude, by character. You know, these things have to be developed, the leader in us. We need to prepare at a higher level for the, for the call that God has on us as followers of him is a higher call, okay, than any other call or any other work especially in these last days, right? So when you read uh, Jesus's first sermon on the Mount in uh, Matthew chapters five through seven, it's evident that the followers of Christ are not only called to be leaders, but are called to live at a higher level, okay? This doesn't mean that we're better than people. We, we look down on people. No, God has called us to be leaders in example. So elevation in ministry demands elevation in living. So this mentorship program, it helps leaders, uh, I believe, it helps leaders to uh, prepare to elevate from the seed of leadership that's planted in the early stages of each leadership level to the fruit of leadership that comes with maturity. I believe it helps them to prepare to elevate from the seed to maturity. This lets us know that, that um, every elect leader must go through two major phases, the seed, which is the call, and the maturity, which is a result of the preparation. So during, during the, this preparation season, all leaders get tested to, to live at a higher level than others. No one responded better to the test than Jesus, right? So, so if we are his leaders and we're following after him, there, Jesus calls his people to be tested, and to live at a higher level than the rest of the world. So by nature, his call brings with it many tests along the way. For tests always follow the call, right? And so <clears throat> these tests, they follow the call to prepare and to, you know, to be prepared and developed as leaders. Okay, and to be developed for the role that we are going to play as leaders. 
And, and so last night I talked a little bit about this call and the preparation, how in the call to leadership, I believe, is the seed of leadership, which, which sprouts and becomes the beginning of leadership. In the preparation are the tests of leadership, which when passed, bring about the fulfillment of leadership. So the call contains the seed of leadership which is the key that unlocks the beginning of leadership. Now, remember, when I'm talking leadership, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you to think that if you're already functioning as a leader, that I'm not talking about you. Because I believe we go from different mantles and assignments and each time that's a new level. So we've got to prepare for that leadership role in that. So we are beginning, right? So as I was saying, um, the call contains the seed, which is the key that unlocks the beginning of leadership and the preparation contains the tests of leadership that when passed can be the key that unlocks the fulfillment of leadership. So between the beginning of the call and the test of the call lies this, this middle ground where emerging leaders experiment to discover their strengths and their weaknesses, you know, their, their passions, their, their levels of commitments, the motivations of their heart. To reach their fullest potential, however, each leader must pass many levels and many tests. So I ask you, are, are you a leader? Are you a leader? If you are a leader, I want you to ask yourself, do I measure up to living at a higher level? Because sometimes leaders are only focused on that, that, that area that they function as a leader, but they don't believe that their whole life has to be brought into alignment with their leadership. Do you measure up to living at a higher level? This is what the ELM program helps leaders do. I believe we help leaders know and practice what it looks like and what it feels like to measure up according to Christ's call on our life. As we see in Ephesians chapter four, to reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure, the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So how did Elder Joanne Taylor Smith and Prophet Kevia Woods, how did they do this? What is it that they did in this program where they can now today be called an elect leader? Now, I want to just give you some insight on what God is saying when he's saying elect. When, when we're talking about elect, that's also a word that's interchangeable with chosen. And as God um, was showing me, and I emphasized to the people that were part of this program, that our goal is that at the end of this program, if you were standing in a line, standing in a group of leaders, believers that have a call on their life, that you would be the one that God would actually select, that God would prefer, that God would choose because he sees his character, he sees his nature, he really sees the motives of the heart, he sees the compassion of Christ, he sees all of the intents and purposes that the person has been proven and that they have what it takes and where he would just choose them because they are they are just, they're, they're the ones he would elect. Y'all know how it is. Remember back in the day when we would be getting ready to play kickball or something on the playground and we had to pick people? We, we, come on, the first round picks were always like the ones you wanted, you know, the, the best ones, the ones you preferred above all. That is the goal of this program. That's the goal, that we would be the ones that God would pick that he would want on our team, that he would, that he would favor, 
that he would favor. So how did they do this? Well, again, like I said, we read and discussed this amazing book, which is called The Making of a Leader, Biblical Leadership Principles for Today's Leaders, which is written by Dr. Frank Damasio. This book is a leadership classic since 1988, okay, for 35 years. It lays out for the serious student a very broad and deep discussion of what it means to be influential in and responsible for a group of followers. It presents a scriptural analysis of the philosophy, history, qualifications, preparation, and practice of Christian leadership. It includes charts and diagrams and illustrations, which in itself help to enhance um, the study on Christian leadership. So in here, these chapters, they cover subjects such as the nature of leadership, um, the call of leadership, man's response to the call of God, heart qualifications of a leader, the leader and the heart of the shepherd, character qualifications, how a leader prepares. We looked at Joshua and Samuel and Elisha and David and Timothy and Paul, and so many of the leaders to see their preparation process and pulled out principles. And we mirrored, we put ourselves in front of a mirror every single Monday to see how we are measuring up to what Christ requires, what he's calling for us. This wasn't a place where we sat and talked about what others weren't doing. This is where we talked about what we were and were not doing. Um, we looked at the tests of ministry preparation and promotion the law of reproduction and leadership, the warfare ministries, restoration ministries, and growth ministries of leaders. We've studied team ministry. We even looked at um, the New Testament warnings that are very relevant to where we are right now, and even discipline and restoration of church leaders and members, and so much more is just in the book. But not only in the book, as I mentioned earlier, we did a SWOT analysis. I believe, I, I really, you know, I really love the SWOT analysis. God, he 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 laid on my heart to, to customize what we would call the elect leader SWOT analysis, which I believe helps leaders create a profile of their spiritual and personal inventory, which then points them to their identity and calling. I believe this gives them a blueprint of God's idea about them and can become a great tool to help elect leaders envision, build, and grow. And I also believe it's a very effective weapon to help fight against discouragement doubt and fear of our futures. And so there's so much, but I had to take that time just to give anyone that is watching here to celebrate with Elder Joanne and Prophet Kivia a little insight on what the elect leader mentorship program is about. So I want to go ahead and introduce to you two of our elect leaders, Elder Joanne and Prophet Kivia, by sharing with you um, a synopsis, a, a brief bio of their journey in the Lord um, from their own words. So you can hear from their own words some of the things um, that they have to say about their journey so you can know them a little bit more. And then I'm going to have conversation with them and I'm going to ask them some questions and they're going to have an opportunity to share with you their experience in this program. So first, let's look at Elder Joanne Taylor Smith. Listen, this is my, oh my goodness, just, she's my like, like, oh my gosh. Okay. Everybody is. So everybody knows this. Everybody knows this because when, when the apostle starts talking about people, she just starts, ooh. She just wants to hug them up. Okay, so Elder Joanne, she received salvation in 1985. So we're looking at like 38 years of walking with the Lord. Areas of ministry service include Mount Gilead, PHC, which I think probably is um, Pentecostal Holiness Church. I'm not sure. PHC, I have to just, uh, you know, figure that's what it is. So she, she, she served there from 2005 to 2010. There she taught Sunday school and ministered and sang in the choir and served as administrative assistant to Dean 
Rosa Keach Gibbs at the Mount Gilead School of Ministry. In 2010, she was ordained an elder. And then from 2010 to 2018, Elder Joanne served as the administrator of the Mount Gilead North Carolina Food Bank in association with Feeding America. And to, to this day, she's currently serving as the president of the board for the food bank. In 2022, she established and founded Cherish Him Ministry of Prayer and Deliverance. Also, Elder Joanne is a ministry team member um, here at Crossover Empowerment Kingdom Ministries, and she's covered by us, and we're just so grateful for her. And she serves as the membership care leader. She has completed um, many of the leadership trainings and any of the, any, listen, anytime Elder Joanne finds out that apostle, a prophet, somebody's doing a class, she is right there with us. She is not going to allow one word to fall from the mouth of God and her not be there with her plate to catch it, okay? <laughs> she has completed many leadership trainings, including um, into the prophetic uh prophetic school that we had, prophetic training and education school. That was like 18 months of, of study and training. And also the making of a leader, which was a few years ago. And then of course, now this program, and she is currently in college with me and with Prophet Kivya. Uh, she is currently pursuing her master's of ministry as a student at Deeper Bible College. So that is our elder Jojo. And then we have Prophet Kivia, Prophet Kivia. I will get in my car and I will drive several hours just to go and get a hug and come back. Okay, Prophet Kivia. Prophet Kivia Woods, um, she was born in Atlanta, Georgia, right? January 20th, 1988. So she's just a young tenderoni. She's just a young baby. She accepted the gift of salvation um, in September of 1995 in her home church, um, which is Timothy Pure Holiness Church of God, with her mother, Evangelist Zeta Fillmore Holtz. Now, she fully rededicated her life to Christ on October 7, 2007, under Greater Morning Star Pentecostal Church in Lexington Park, Maryland. She has served faithfully under an array of pastors due to her military service tour. In 2015, Prophet Kivya accepted her call in ministry and served under various departments of ministry, including hospitality, children's ministry, altar worker, greeter, intercessor, and outreach in the states of Maryland, Texas, and Florida in the Lord's Church. The gift of the prophetic was activated through dreams in 1988 at the age of 10. It was cultivated when hearing God in 2007 and at the age of 19. Her gift and her personal growth in God have developed and advanced throughout the years. Prophet Kivia serves as a ministry team member here at CEK Ministries under myself and my husband, Prophet Jerry Isaac. And she has participated in um, the Into the Prophetic program and is a part of the Prophetic Council here and has successfully completed the Elect Leader Mentorship Program. Passionate about the truth and holiness of God, she has a strong intercessory prophetic and teaching ministry and effectively ministers the word of God on social platforms as given as God gives her the direction. Prophetic or prophet Kivia is the mother of one beautiful chocolate drop, Miss Mackenzie Robinson. Uh, and she's also uh, the sister of two siblings and aunt of two and her mother's last born blessing. Mm -hmm. So those are our two ladies that we are featuring tonight. And so I do want to, I already gave them some questions that I wanted to ask them and I wanted them to be prepared to answer on tonight, just to help the listeners to gauge um, what the program uh, did for them. 
and even why they join the program. So I want to ask you first, Elder Joanne, and then you will answer the same question, Prophet Kivia. Why did you join the program and submit yourself to the rigorous spiritual study and personal examination of your leadership attitudes, attributes, and qualifications. Well, I joined the program uh, at a moment when I it was ref I was referred. Someone uh, told me about the program, and so I just I knew that I I needed to go further than where I was going. So this was in 2019, and I knew that I needed to you know, discipline myself in a better way. And it seemed like I was more stagnant than anything. I was like, you know, in a church, but I was, I was just in a church, you know, but I wasn't getting or feeling or, or, or being, I wasn't, I don't want to say being fed because you can feed yourself, but I know that I needed more than what I was getting or what I was allowing myself to get. That's another thing. You know, you have to allow it to come in. The information is all out there, but you have to allow it, receive it, and then apply it. And so that was one of my reasons right there for coming into the program. And then uh, when I first came in, I came into a couple of sessions and I said to myself, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> I said, I said, this is, uh, you know, above my head. And so Spirit of God said, no, stay, stay there. You know, that's, that's the only way you're going to grow is if there's someone to grow up to, you know? So yeah, yeah, you know, you got to have that big brother, that big sister in the spirit, you know, that you can grow up to. And so that was one of the things that I, I had to learn because um, it was, it was easier to back down. It was easier to stay in that com com complacency. That's what it was. Complacency seat but i knew i had to come out of that seat i knew uh and i knew this since i was like 12 years old that life had more meaning than what i experienced at 12. you know you're born you you live while and then you pass away and that's it this is at 12 years old i started asking these questions what does life mean and so i went on a pursuit but my pursuit was slow it was slow. It was slow. But by the grace of God, and I know it was a leading of the spirit of God. I mean, without a doubt, it was God leading me to uh, be in the ministry of CEK uh, and being under the uh, the uh, covering of Apostle Marguerite and, Pop and Prophet Gary. And I've been so blessed to be able to meet such great people that truly exemplify mm, Jesus Christ. And I thank God for it. And I know that it's God that brought me here because it's like, I'm looking at myself in a different way. Um, I'm, and I'm, I'm like, I'm not seeing myself the way my inner self used to see me. My inner self was not in agreement with God. Okay. My inner self was more trying to pull me back and pull me down. But when I came to, to uh, this ministry and joined the program, uh, the e Elam program, I uh, praise God. God just moved and God's just, he's still moving. He's still moving. He don't stop. He don't stop. So if he don't stop, then I shouldn't stop. Okay. So I'm just here to just take in everything that God has for me. And then um, and there's some obstacles I have to still overcome, but I know they will be overcame. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Elder Joanne. Thank you. So, Prophet Kivia, why did you join Elm and submit yourself to the rigorous spiritual study and personal examination of your leadership attitudes, attributes, and qualifications? Well, good evening, Apostle. Good evening, Elder Jojo and everybody who's watching. Um, because I guess first, because I have a realization that wolves um, prey around the outer courts. Sheep enter into the intercession of the inner courts and sons worship in the Holy of Holies. So because I understand this, 
I was like, okay, God, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, regardless of what's on my plate. Um, I do have a lot on my plate, but I know just to be submitted, even though I'm not new to uh apostle, because I've been walking with her for three years now, but just coming into the family of CEK, I have to be submitted under the leadership, I have to understand the style of what's going on. The order of what's going on with you, Prophet Jerry, everybody else, how everything operates and how I am to be positioned and what goes on here in the operation. So that was one reason for two, Apostle was on my head about it. <laughs> she was on my head about it. But of course, I do understand that a gift that's not monitored or a walk that's not monitored, you're a bastard in a spirit, period leadership with anything you are a bastard in the spirit and I am a son even though I'm a daughter of Zion but my sonship is important to me so I have to submit my sonship not just under this leadership but also under God so that's why I went on ahead and just went on ahead and flow through she didn't have to she didn't have to tug on me too much but I went on ahead to um, be a part of it and it really was a blessing but I do like I said I have that comprehension of wolves prey around the outer courts and sheep are uh with intercession within the uh inner courts and that sonship really happens in the holy of holies and that's where i'm pressing to be so i got to press into that and this leadership class is part of that pressing mm. oh that's so good thank you thank you see i already knew that having you you too would be tonight that y'all would be like throwing them bombs out there. So uh, y'all hold on. Y'all out there in the audience listening, hold on. Okay, because these two, when they get going, man, when God gets to speaking, that's good. Thank you so much. Okay, so now Elder Joanne, how has the elect leadership, mentorship, help you to improve can you give an example of a tangible improvement that has happened in your leadership um in your ministry as a result of elect leader mentorship program okay elect leadership mentorship mentorship program has helped me to improve in my awareness of my of myself, the awareness of God and God in me. And I the example I would give is I would have to say that uh prayer ministry. I would have to say the prayer ministry that uh God gave me uh a watch. And of course I had to go and research and understand what the watch meant because I, I researched it years and years and years ago but not knowing that I would ever have to that he was going to give me a watch and not only that he gave me that he gave me the name Cherish because uh we had an exercise in that class and uh you know and and our apostle had access to uh uh what would you think what do you hear God calling you and I, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm sure I'm paraphrasing but what do you hear God calling you and that was what he was calling me cherish that was my name that was that's my spiritual name cherish and so and that was an awakening for me in my spirit that was awakening for me because it um it's something that I never heard before or felt before because I came from a, a um uh, loveless upbringing, you know, and so uh, that was really a, a great move for me. That that was a beginning, and then also uh, the ministry, the watch, the three a.m. and three p.m. He gave me that watch. He gave me the three a.m. because at that hour is the enemy is out making plans and play and making strategies. And he's out. Uh, 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 they're out. They're out doing things and influencing different areas of the of the world. So, so, and and actually, he gave me this region. He gave me a uh, North Carolina region. He didn't give me the whole world. Praise God! But he gave me the North Carolina region. And so, 
I thank you and praise God because uh, uh, I, you know, it's the first of each month, uh, five days, first five days of each month. And I thank God for it because that's giving me discipline also because to be on and also there's a team that comes on also and as the Lord leads them. And plus, uh, praise God, it's like it's giving me a, 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 a really something to actually feel valued for. You know, I feel valued, you know, because the Lord, that's the, and the Lord, not only that, praise my God, even uh, have me go all the way to Florida and someone prophesied about this in it. And they didn't even know me. The prophet, he never knew me at all. And God, God, hallelujah, gave, had a, this man fashions a staff out of this wood he gets from Israel. I'm not, I'm not even sure what the name of the wood is, but he fashions this staff and it's beautiful. It's right behind me. You see it leaning up here, but, and he fashions it and he puts uh, the stars of David. Uh, he puts the scriptures from the Old Testament. He's got, uh, uh, he's even got uh, uh, cities on it. And he had this staff for two years. I think he said it was one of the first ones he made. I'm not sure. And his wife kept asking him, when are you going to sell it? You know, and he doesn't release them just to anyone. He released them to who, who God leads him to release them to, you know, even to sell them to. And so anyway, praise God. Oh, my God. That day. Oh, my God. It was at the Sanctuary Experience. SXP. Oh, my God. That, that, that time, that season in my life just elevated me into a place that I have never been before in my life. And I give God the glory and praise. I give God the praise for the people that honor his word, the people that honor who he is and, and exemplify him. You know, they, they show, they show you him. You say, God showed, God came and showed up and showed out. Well, guess what? He shows out in his people or, you know, in this ministry all the time. And so anyway, mm -hmm. he, and he said that I, that God had told him, told us, he kept telling his wife, no, God didn't release it yet. He don't know me or anything. And God released that staff to me back, it was in June. No, no, it wasn't mm -hmm. in June. It was in September. September, September of 2022. Yeah, September of 2022. And, and, you know, and then, you know, cause God, I'll tell you, God is so wonderful. Cause he said, he kept telling me that God values what you do. He even spoke about, mm -hmm. the, he, he values that you were doing a prayer. I had just started it in August. Yeah. That was in mm -hmm. September. And he was saying, God mm -hmm. values you, 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 you doing what you're doing. And, you know, and, you know, I didn't hear all the prophecy because you know how that go. You're so excited and whatnot. I didn't hear everything, but I just know that it was just, a, it was so, mm -hmm. uh, it was so, I don't know. It was so surreal, surreal. And it was just, you know, I was almost feeling like Paul, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, caught up, it was, it was know? a Damascus road experience. Yes. yes it was uh, like, mm -hmm. I was caught up. And so, and then he also said that, um, um, oh, Mm. That's what it said on the uh, staff. It said Raleigh, North Carolina, yes, and yes. Cary, North Carolina. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Only God knew where I came from. Yes, He didn't know. So I know this prophet. God used this prophet to yes. to bless my soul, to bless mm -hmm. my spirit, to to tell me that uh that He sees me and He hears me. Because that's that was one of my things, uh, um, you know, like in the ministry and in, in, in growing up and everything. Nobody's going to listen to me. That was one of my, but God listens. God yes, hears. Yeah. And I tell yeah. you, this just Glory. and then going through this making of a leader, the book, and and going through all the other classes and and any and anything tied up with CEK Ministries. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, it's just to God be the glory. Yeah, yeah, to God be the glory. God is so good. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I praise God for it. I really praise do. God. Now, praise that's God. my uh that's my Amen. being aware of God yes. and having a relationship and also the governmental order, you know, yeah. like I'm fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. I, you know, mm -hmm. it's it, it's not functioning unless 
yes. as a five-fold ministry, you know, the church true. is not functioning. So it's like, you want to get the word out. You want, because he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So it's like getting the word out. And so I'm like, you know, there's still some overcoming I have to do, but like I said before, mm -hmm. hey, I overcome Amen. them by the word of my testimony, by the blood that's of the right. lamb and by the word of my that's testimony. Right. So that's why that's I'm right. going to testify. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> that's hey. right. Well, praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much because, you know, that uh, I'm grateful that the program did create that space where God had an opportunity to speak to you and really, you know, um, you know, get you that name. So for anyone that's listening, because she had said 2019, and we know the program started in January this year, but you have to understand um, Elder Joanne's journey with us and her frame work, because all of this ties together. Elm didn't just, it just didn't begin with her with the elect leader program. It's hard for her to, to just point here without pointing to 2019 because it was the same book we read in that in that program in 2019, but we approached it differently. So, um, and I'm so grateful that you received that word from God of who you are, Cherish, because that just from having the right identity from him, you know, getting that right name and hearing him when he speaks to you, knowing that every time the word speaks to you, he is calling you cherished first. He's not saying to you, oh, uh, stupid one, or oh, one that can't never get it right, or oh, no, it's always cherish is how he, he addresses you. And then he brings the word, whether it's correction, whether it's wisdom, whether it's a prophecy, it always follows the call of being cherished. And that helps to frame your relationship with him, helps you to receive from him, knowing that you are cherished by him. And so I'm so grateful to God for that. Hallelujah. So uh, Prophet Kibia, how um, has Elm helped you to improve in any of your leadership areas? Is there something tangible, some tangible evidence? Yeah, uh, the tangible part for me would be patient. Um, as you know, with prophets, we either hide a cold for the most part, and it's a big part of our personality. So just um, patience throughout the learning and the teaching of um, our uh, resources, what we had, and also uh, listening to you, um, listening to Pastor Michelle. I didn't got popped on my hand by Apostle. I didn't got popped on my hand by Pastor Michelle because that's the area for me when it comes to others. Like you, I, you really have to exercise one of the fruit of the spirit, long suffering. So throughout this program, I learned more to long suffer with my sisters, even though everybody path is different on their courses of where God has them, but it's just more so to take a step back, breathe, and just be patient, because really for me, you know, if you know anything about me, you either had a cold, it's either had a cold, it's really no in between, but this helped me to understand the patience of the gray area when it comes mm. to people. So it is a such thing as a gray area before you get to the, to the other side. So I always said that would be the tangible thing for me from this program. Awesome. Awesome. So listen, um, what was one of your favorite moments or a big aha moment. So Elder Joanne, I know you share some things about, you know, um, cherish and things, but if there is something else that you can think of that was um, a very important, a favorite or an aha moment for you, Elder, in the program. Praise God. I, I might, I will have to say, even though there was a lot of ahas. Mm-hmm. I picked one aha, and that was okay. the heart, the heart, the, the qualifications of a leader of leadership of a leadership's heart. And um, my and then at my aha moment was, I thought about how we see the qualities of a leader's heart are very important. And that's in chapter five. It says we see that the qualities of a leader's heart are very important to God. God is continually trying. That's in De found in Deuteronomy 8 and 2, searching, 
found in Jeremiah 17, 10, and pondering as found in Proverbs 21 and 2. The heart of his leaders. He's searching. Wait, okay. He's searching. No, he's trying, searching, and pondering. And like she said, trying, continually trying. That's the testing. To try it. To try if you know, will you still love me? You know, will you still continue to grow? Will you, you know, even now I'm thinking about the people that are in the, uh, other countries that we're hearing about that, that are, are, their whole life is being threatened because of Christianity. So I'm thinking to myself, and I've sort of had to think and ask myself, what would you do if you was in that situation? Would you die for him? Oh God. I was thinking about, I said, you know, whew, glory be to God. I thought about that and I was thinking about it so hard. What would I do? And I can't, I can't lie to myself and say, I, and say, oh yeah, I'll do this. Oh yeah, I'll do that. I cannot lie to myself. I don't know what I would do. I know what I want to do. I know what I desire to do, but I do not know what I would do in a situation like that. You know, but I pray for them and, and my heart goes out to them. That's what say the qualities of the heart of a leader. Your heart goes out to everyone, even the ones that are not, that have turned their back on God because God has a heart that does not turn back on anyone. God loves everyone. So it's like learning to have that same type of heart that he has. You know, that, that, that's, whoo. That is my take on that because if I have the heart, if I have the heart of God, if I can exercise and 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 exemplify and and and, and have a heart that that is after His own heart, absolutely. You know, then I have everything. Wow. I have everything. Yeah. You know, I That's have everything. So and and yeah. I, and, I, and I want to say, and I, I, the last thing was I, I want to say is my heart is as as He ponders, so shall I ponder on his attitude, his attributes, his holy loving heart, and the and his plan for my life. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thanks, man. This is Thanks. what e this is what El Elam. This is what Elam. This is what God has done to me through Elam. You know, yes, amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the heart part, that was that's always a big thing for me because that's where I get um I get to really hone in on teaching you all how to examine the motives of your heart. Because of course the word always talks about that, but we don't always know well how, you know, and so I'm so so blessed to be able to give you some practical exercises to help you to identify the motives of your heart. So that's so good. Come on through here, Prophet Kivia. What was one of your favorite moments or a big aha moment for you? I'm going to piggyback on what uh, Elder Joe Joe said, because I was thinking about when she was speaking, like uh, about the willingness. She knows what she wants to do, but will she do it or not? And it just really, for me, that's part of one, because for me, was the functions of leadership in chapter 17. But when she was speaking, what really came to me was in the book of John of how the word of the Lord says that Jesus uh, uh, was in his father's bosom. So it's one thing for us if we really, we can lay on his bosom, but the question is, will we rest? Because it's a difference between the two with that. And if we will rest and what she's speaking about is truly resting and sacrificing, would you really do what Christ did? And that's a big thing about the matters of the heart of what you taught us for a while. And it's like, God, you know, you, you went to Calvary's cross for us. I ain't going to say I, I would do that for everybody. Like she said, I know the desire, but I didn't, my, my blood atones for nothing. Jesus, I let me. I'm not even about to go into that pocket, <laughs> but my blood atones for nothing. So for me, um, I'm in agreement with you, Elder Jojo. But the other thing for me was the functions of the leadership uh, of leadership. That was the aha for me, Chapter 17, because we're speaking about three different uh, people personalities. You're talking about Elisha, 
you're talking about Nehemiah and you're talking about Paul. So for me, the biggest takeaway for me with this is when uh, me, me and Apostle discussed this a while ago, but when you're really in a place of leadership and when you're really in covenant with what, when, once you're in covenant, you're really signing a contract of death with people. So I'm in a contract of death with you, Apostle. I'm in a contract of death with Elder Jojo. I'm in a contract of death with my sisters for whatever they're pulling on me for or what I'm pulling on them for because it's a covenant thing. Covenants are, you know, covenants don't die. Again, as we know, covenants and contracts are two different things. You can breach a contract. You can break it. But a uh, covenant, that's blood. Jesus, I'm trying to not go here, Apostle. <laughs> But that's blood. So for me, with the functions of a leader is, is dying to self as Christ died for us, even though he said, hey, you don't understand the things that I'm doing now. But once I leave, you will understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing and how I'm doing. You can't comprehend this in the natural, but spiritually, I'm opening up a gateway. So I know for us spiritually, because we stand proxy with intercession, with words of prayer for everything for other people, that we're opening up a gateway. Because sometimes we have to be bridges for other people because sometimes we're not sturdy enough to get to the other side and that we have to be in covenant with people to get us to the other side. So I thank God for that. That was the aha for me because casting your net just is not the blessings of God. Casting your net is praying for your brothers and sisters. Casting your net is putting people up before the Lord because sometimes they can't do that. It's not just the reaping of blessings. It's the sowing for everyone. And that's the selflessness of sowing for everyone. And I'm going back on you. <laughs> glory oh my goodness let's not get into the covenant but yes 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 oh my goodness if we could really see how we are to be in covenant with one another in the lord i mean and i'm glad you know you made the point your, your blood don't atone for nothing that god he wants us to relate with one another covenantally and not contractually and know that this thing is to be unto death because that's how a covenant is covenants aren't to be broken they are to be fulfilled and 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 when we go to the altar in marriage and we say this is until death does us part or until death fulfills this relationship and so that's how that's how it ends it ends with with death so yeah so in it until then we are in this thing for life we are in this thing for life. Okay, so three quick questions. They're going to be the kind that you would be able to answer right away. Then we're going to hear from each of you as you um, share from your heart, you know, what the Lord has given you to share as a result of these months in this in this training. Um, how would you, Elder Joanne, how would you describe this program in 30 seconds or less? So in other words, imagine you are on an elevator. You only got 30 seconds with the person, but you really want them to understand about something that could change their life, change their leadership life, change the level at which they live. How would you describe this leadership program in 30 seconds or less? All right. How would I describe, Elon? I would describe it as a program that opens you up to things that you've, you've heard them before, but not in the same exact way. They're presented to you in a way that you can understand. They're presented to you to where you like, it's not like, it's, it's not presented to your carnal self. It's presented mm -hmm. to your spiritual self. And once it's presented to your spiritual self, it, it goes in and it, takes and does something to your soul. Your mm -hmm. soul begins to cry out for more. Your soul mm -hmm. begins to change and starts to understand the the, 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 the the workings of God, the word of God, the, 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 not just the written word, but the rhema word, the word that moves and, and, and lives and has its being in us. Mm -hmm. That is the, that is uh uh, what I would say to someone, I don't know if they would understand it, but I would say these things to them. And, and because it's, 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 high, it's, it's, high, cause I speak about it. I speak about this program. I speak about everything. I'm 
I have a heart of sharing. That's what God does. Mm -hmm. I have a, I've always had, even when I was in the world, I had a heart of sharing. So I believe that uh, God wants us to share because I've always been that type of person that want other people to excel. Mm -hmm. You know, even, like I said, even before I got saved, I've done things and, and, and people have, and, and because I did it, they excelled and came out of like abusive relationship, you mm -hmm. know, and excelled in different kinds. Of so, so God gave me that spirit. And so now it's being enhanced and it's being used for the uh, glory of God. You Man. know, yeah, it's being used for the glory of God. And it mm -hmm. and, and like like Kibia said, you 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 either prophet as Kibia said, it's e you either hot or you cold, because and, and you find yourself pondering and wondering about some of everything. I mean, mm -hmm. all day long. I mean, if you can walk <laughs> around with a tape recorder with uh, on your hip or something like that, there would be so much information that be downloaded to your brain yeah, and to yeah, your mind yeah, yeah. all throughout the day and whatnot. You know, questions that you want to know, the questions you want to, uh, 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 you you feel. But you know, like what happens with me? I know with me. I don't know about nobody else. If I don't write it down. Guess what? It's gone. <laughs> you know Amen. Yeah, Amen. I'm so I have to write I'm these things you. down. So so praise God. In, okay. in, in that thirty seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was more like. You know, four minutes, but <laughs> but you need to hold those thoughts for when it's time for you to share, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> so, Prophet Kivia, how would you describe the leadership program in thirty seconds or less? I would call it the countdown to self. If I, if someone wants to be accountable, I would really encourage them and tell them if you truly want a countdown to self to really see where your five is with God, where your four, where your three, where your two, where is your with God, that I would I would really say that to them if you really want to know, because it's a difference between your truth and the truth. So that's what that's what would be my answer with you. Well that would be my promo to them is the countdown to self if you if you want to be accountable to self with the word of God. So good. I love that. That's honey, that's a whole series. That's a whole message. The countdown to self. I, Oh, Lord, have mercy. I can't wait for you to reach it. Okay, Elder Joanne, was it worth the investment? Now, 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 listen, we're not going to share with people um, the value, the cost, okay? Because the cost is what it is, all right? And like I said last night, we have many amazing um, leaders and coaches out there that are doing what God's called them to do to help people to excel in the areas of their life they need to excel in, okay? And these programs are often thousands of dollars, and I don't say that they're not worth it because when it comes down to you being who God's called you to be and do what God's called you to do in this world, then you it's worth the investment, right? So we're not so much sharing with people the cost financially, but this does cost. It costs financially. It costs you time and a great sacrifice. We've already talked about the hours in the classroom, the hours of study and, and you having to speak to yourself and command yourself to continue, okay? So real quick, was it worth the investment? And would you recommend it and why? Uh, yes, uh, it was mm -hmm. most definitely worth the investment. I would recommend it to anyone because the growth is exponential. Mm -hmm. And I thank and praise God because uh, I feel like I have grown. And, and speaking of covenant, this was this was one part of my answer in this relating to is, is I have I was given a free cho a choice. See, because I had, I made a choice when I said, oh no, I don't, I, this is over my head. I made a free choice mm -hmm. to continue. And because I made a free choice, I, enter, I was relating to God by entering mm -hmm. and agreeing to his covenant. You know, just what she just said. I mean, that was a confirmation Amen. and to his covenant relationship. And as God, and as God reconstructs me, my goal is to be a leader that influences people to see God in me and follow mm -hmm. after him as I pursue him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So much. Okay, Prophet Kivia, was it worth the investment, the press, yeah. 
And would you recommend it and why? <laughs> yes, I would recommend it because it really keeps you within boundaries of accountability and discipline. Um, I can't say how many Monday nights that I will fight myself from work and everything to just come and be accountable. But if I can be accountable to the world, I can be accountable to my role within God's body, also to my leadership and also accountable for self because you have to grow and this will stretch you. This will stretch you. So it was worth the investment. And I, I would recommend this to anyone who wants to be stretched for real because you you're going to be uncomfortable in this walk. It's a com it's a constant uncomfortability. And if you're ready for it, then go for it. But yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Amen. Amen. So now, listen, thank you, ladies, so much. Now we want to hear from each of you. We'll start with you, Elder Joanne. I'm going to let you wrap it up, uh, Prophet Kivia. You know, take a few minutes just to share with the people. Take about 10 minutes to share with the people on whatever it is uh, that God has given you to share as a result of this program. Well, praise God. I would like to share the fact that growth is inevitable. We must grow. Jesus planted, this, Jesus was the first seed and we are the continuing seeds. So we have to continue to grow. As long as we're here on this earth, we need to grow, grow in Christ, grow in the word of God. Just grow that we can be that instrument, the instrument that God has called us to be and to fulfill. This is Jesus fulfilled his calling. We have to fulfill our calling. I have to fulfill my calling. And I want others to understand that you're not just called to sit in a pew or even on the pulpit. There's always more in God because he's so vast. He is so, he, he, there is no words that can, there is a, not a word that can actually describe our God. And if if he wants to stretch us, like our prophet has said, if he wants to stretch us, then we should let him stretch us because the stretching is going to be good. If he good, then he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it unless it was everything God does is good when it comes to his children. And he said he would not withhold any good thing from us. So therefore, whatever you feel like you're lacking or whatever you feel that you don't have or or you're not able to reach the goal or the dreams that you have. It's only because you're not stepping out and allowing God to dream, let that dream come true because it can come true. It can come true. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm 72 years old and I'm still dreaming and I'm still believing that it will come true. Why? Because of the God I serve who loves us. I mean, absolutely loves us. I thought about this this week too. I said, we turn our back on him. We reject him. We, we, we some of us even curse him and all of these things that we do to God and he's still loves us. He keeps his covenant. His covenant doesn't change. Man's covenant is the one that lacks. Okay. So now we got to get up there. Come on. Look at his covenant. Look at his covenant. Follow his covenant. Go after his covenant. Fulfill the covenant that he's placed in us. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do it. But he did. He did. I mean, the love, there is no, we can't even phantom the love that God has for us. It, it's, a, it's totally impossible for us to phantom the love he has for us. You know, because we could, first of all, enough, one thing you can say right now that you were born in the United States of America, where you are freely, you can freely praise him and glorify him and make choices. There's countries where people cannot make a choice about anything about what they eat, what they drink, what they wear, you know? I mean, they are killed for not just covering up their face. But God, he chose us to be here. 
Why? To be the remnant, to be the ones that will sacrifice our own well-being in order to praise God and serve him as someone else might be able to do the same thing. You know, somebody got to be somewhere where they can pray. He's got to have some people where they can pray for those that are in places where they cannot pray. God is good. And I love him. I love him. And he loves us. So come on in. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Elder Joanne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. My God. Listen, you just started off the gate. Did she start off the gate? Prophet Keep you talking yeah. about to grow and fulfill. And you know what blessed me? Well, you said grow, that, you know, you, you're encouraging us to grow and fulfill our calling. Our calling is beyond the pew and even beyond the pulpit. If we can get the people out the pulpit to see that it is even, I'm not trying to take you out the pulpit and have you leave and not do the work, but it's more than the pew and the pulpit. My God. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you so much. Come on through here, Prophet Kibia. All right, I got three scriptures for you. We start off Proverbs uh, chapter seven, verse seven. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Matter of fact, let me start at the top. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of, of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. Then Malachi uh, chapter two, verses seven. For the lips of a priest should keep knowledge and the people should seek the law from his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So my push would be is to really sincerely seek the word of God. We are living in the last days. We need all, all knowledge is not sound doctrine. Let me be clear about that. But we know that biblically the principles and the roadmap of what God got us, we have to cling to what God has said. We have to hold on to the horns of the altar. It's so much perverse things that are going on. It's so many illegitimate words that are going forth that is not of the Lord. It's false teachings, false prophets. We know the word of the Lord tells us these things. So people like us, like um, the disciple John, we're still crying from the wilderness what the truth is of the Lord. So my push would be tell the truth in season, out of season. Tell people of the goodness of God. Tell people about pure teaching and leadership classes like this. Tell people of who you are. Let your fruit speak for you. Let your character speak for you. Let God speak for you. The Holy Spirit said when we don't know what to pray for, he will put the words in our mouth. He will put the words in our spirit. So you let God speak. Don't put words in your own mouth. Don't lie on the Lord. Don't say, thus said the Lord. There's so many people who lie on God, and that's not the truth of what he said. You let the Holy Ghost lead you. You let the Holy Ghost guide you because he will. He is a light to our feet. He's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God will give you the words to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you to shut up when you are to shut up. Just because we are leaders, we are not to always speak. God has not always released us in a season to speak. Even for myself, this is not my season to speak. The word of God tells us that many are called, but few are chosen. I am called, but I am not chosen in this uh, season to speak publicly to everybody. This is my season of discipline of learning as it is for many other people. So we have to engage, engage where God has us, not what man thinks, but what God says, because at the end of the day, we have to give an account to him about what we've done. And you don't want to be a wolf praying on the outer courts. You want to be a son in the holy of holies. I want to stay a son within the holy of holies. I want to keep oil in my lamp. You keep oil in your lamp. Don't let anybody dwindle your light. The word of the, uh, the Lord tells us to build ourselves up on our most holy faith. So even if you just got a flicker, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, you flame, you blow the flame, God. Blow the flame, God, that we can be what you called us to be, that we can go farther is what you told us to go, that we can be accountable as not just your children, but as sheep, God, to do what you said of what thus said the Lord, not what thus said of self, but what thus said of the Lord. So that would be my push. I gave you scripture for it. Go back and read it. We have to be accountable. Let the Lord speak for you. Don't speak for yourself and don't pull yourself to the forefront. Promotion comes from God. When it's your season to thrust forward and push forward, he will elevate you, but you have to die first. 
again, we go back to this Delf contract. It's not just with our brothers and sisters, but it's first and foremost to God. Hi. Listen, I I can't write as now. I'm I'm good with taking some notes, but I have yet to master taking notes when you are speaking, woman of God, because this stuff be coming fast and furious. My goodness, but I love it how you, you know, really, I mean, that's the prophetic in you. That's the prophet in you. I love it because prophets speak the heart of God and God's heart is always for us to be secure, us to be blessed, us to be safe, us to be found in him, us to be at peace with God and God at peace with us. And so, you know, you just coming right out the gate, you know, with Proverbs and Malachi and just talking about how like all knowledge is not good knowledge. It's not sound doctrine and how we should shun the perverse and false doctrines and perverse and false ministries, perverse and false programs and trainings and things that could look good on the outside, but really don't have God's full approval on them. There may be some elements in there where you can see some elements of, of you know, God, because people will come and cherry pick some things, because we even talked about that in the class about how just because God allows something does not mean that God approves of it. And we need to understand that God allowing a thing is not necessarily his approval because a lot of times he's working through the things that he's allowing so he can unfold a greater plan and get to the, the result that will be him, that will look like him. So we will see people in the pulpits on these platforms where we're supposed to be preaching the gospel, which is holy, and the things that are being done and the way that we are dressing <clears throat> is very carnal, bringing attention to ourselves. It's bringing attention to the flesh and appealing to the people's flesh realm, even though we know that God gave us our senses, so we got to see, hear, touch, smell, but they still should be um, activated in the most um, pure, sincere, holy way as possible so that people don't get caught up in the senses and aren't able to receive the spiritual things. And so for you to admonish the people that all the knowledge and all the things that we necessarily see does not necessarily mean that it is good, and that it is of God. Okay. And and that's part of what being in this kind of a program talks about, introduces, we discuss, we flesh through, we come in and we talk about our experiences, the things we see. We'll even bring in current events and things that are happening in the church, discuss those things, flesh through them. What does the word of God say? Does this look like God? What is the appropriate way? What would be God's idea, because y'all know me, I may not be like, it may not say holiness on my, uh, on our ministry name, but I'm all about holiness unto the Lord and, and, and really leading out with God's holiness because holiness should be the thing that characterizes everything. And if we are looking for God's holiness and if we don't see holiness, then to me, that helps us to right away identify is this sound doctrine? Is this is this holy? Is this is this God? If I can't find what God defines as holy, and holy ain't got nothing to do with the you know uh, whether you got lipstick on and those kind of things, um, but it does have a lot to do with um, how we with the motives of our heart and in our intentions, you know what I'm saying? Our intentions with God 
And if our desire really, really, really is to not only please him, but to present him accurately to the people, then we're going to do less of the things that are going to prevent them from seeing him and cause them to see us more. But we, 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 we tend to, we tend to, to, you know, make it about us. And so I thank you for saying, you know, to remind the people to, to speak the truth only the truth of the truth according to what God says is true, not our truth, but he, when we see the, the Bible and on the front it says Holy Bible, and some of them will say Holy Canon, when you understand that the canon is, is, is a word that describes a rod, it, it means rod, measuring rod. It is a stick. It's a measuring stick. It is a standard so that, that means that the Bible is the standard of truth. And so we need to only speak the, the truth as we know it as at the level of what God has revealed it to us. You know what I'm saying? And not just be satisfied with our truth, <laughs> but test our truth against the truth so that we can at least minister and speak the truth at the level of our revelation. Because a lot of us, nobody has all of the revelation in the world. But don't let our words be error because we literally are willingly, des desire, you know, willingly being ignorant, willingly dismissing, willingly flowing and going with our flesh and our desires and not with the truth of the word of God. Speak, tell the truth only, speak only what the Lord says and when. <laughs> like you said, know those seasons. Know those seasons just because we're called to leadership doesn't mean that we have to speak all the time. Now, you know, we've had this discussion and I'm a, I'm a big proponent on telling a person that, yes, I do believe that we it's always appropriate to you know if someone asks you something or you know to be able to at least share your experience with the lord you know if god's blessed you if he's delivered you from you know drug addiction if he's helped you you know you you don't need permission and ordination or any kind of title to be a witness, <laughs> you know, speak to what, you know, God, he, he, he healed my heart. I had a heart of bitterness. Now I, I'm, you know, he's helped me to be able to forgive and you, you can always do that. But when it comes down to getting out there and, and, um, exegeting text and leading people into, you know, and telling people the principles of God and how to live and what you should and should now, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You speak only the truth and only what God leads you, you know, what the Lord puts in your mouth to say and when he's, when he says it. But our testimony, that belongs to us. That's our own copyright. We can publish that all day long. God says, publish my exploits all day long. And so, you know, that's always in season, right? To preach the good news of what God has done in your life. But the rest of that stuff, you, yeah, you, you, yeah, the rest of it, you gotta honor God, honor God. Oops, so you were getting ready to say something. Yeah, prophet. you can speak, you can speak the good news, but did nobody tell you to speak the gospel? You gotta be careful with. It. <laughs> you gotta yeah. be careful with yeah. it. But what you were saying too is because sometimes <laughs> as men, we want, we want peers and others to lay on our bosoms of knowledge and not God's bosom mm -hmm. of knowledge, and that's where we error was so so much so so much um, um yes yes amen amen so i thank you ladies for hanging out with me um and you know sharing um with everyone about the need and the importance and the benefit of becoming a kingdom leader who's 
inner attitudes, motivations, and thoughts have been dealt with, prepared, and developed by the dealings of the Holy Spirit for the, not just for the full release of our gifts and ministries, but for us to be able to um, escort and walk with people and develop people to the point where they can experience the same, where they can have the full release of their gifts and ministries, because that's what God's called us to do, right? Reproduce reproducers and reproduce a different breed of leaders, okay? So I'm honored to have you all with me. And for those who are watching tonight, if, um, like I said last night, I will not be doing this program in 2024. When we advertised it at the end of 2022, I was serious when I said that this was a unique opportunity um, and to get in while you could, because I didn't know when it would come back around. Uh, so I will not be doing this in 2024. I will not be doing any one-on-one -on -one mentoring which is what I used to do before we did this. I will not be doing that in 2024. I'm not available. Um, maybe in 2025. But what I do have out here is a wait list where if that is something that you desire, because let me tell you something, you may be like, 2025, I can't wait that long. Let me tell you something. If you're still alive, it'll be a good time for you to join us. Because one thing we've learned is that we, this is a progressive thing there's always room for growth, always room for training and development, always room for impartation. And so if you're still walking with the Lord and you're still breathing in 2025, okay, and you want to be a part of this program and, and bring yourself to another level of leadership, then I would encourage you to, um, if you're watching on Facebook, I've already put in the chat the, the information where you can sign up on the wait list and just give me your email address and I'll be able to um, capture everyone's information and email you when the next opportunity comes. But um, yeah, this, this one has passed, but I'm grateful that I've had these amazing six ladies with me that endured, endured to the end. <laughs> And have received the, the beautiful, you know, uh, certificates and now they're able to share with you all. Um, so I just thank God tomorrow night, we have one more night. We are going to have Pastor Michelle Costin uh, from New, um, New Heritage Christian Worship Center. And then we are also going to have our very own evangelist, Degrea Bowman who is our wonderful woman of God at CEK Ministries. She's my personal assistant and she is over our Rhema Grace uh, Encounter Prayer Ministry. So she's going to be with us. We're going to be showcasing them. So be sure to, to tune back in with us tomorrow night and, and be ready for what the Lord is going to release to you through these two women of God. But until then, Elder Joanne, I thank God for you. Um, Prophet Kivia, this is our last official night together in the Elm space, okay? So in class, we had our last class. We had a chance to share with one another some things, um, but this is celebrating. It's kind of like a, it's not a graduation because we decided not to do a graduation, but to do the showcase. And I'm just so godly proud of both of you women um, I just love you so much. Just love you, love you, love you. And just excited to be walking next to you in the kingdom of God. God bless you, ladies. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, peace in Jesus name. God bless everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Join me tomorrow night at 7 p.m. God bless you. Good night.